You're live. Hello, everyone. I'm Stacy Williams, and Tim is behind the camera, Robertson. We're here today to demo bottle stoppers, and today we're going to be doing a spalted pick-in blank, but I'm going to talk about how to set up your blank. Basically, you find your center of your blank, and you take an awl, and you dimple the end of it. That way your drill bit will find that center and just go in three quarters of an inch and you take a tap the thread your blank but before you thread your blank with your tap take you some thin CA and squirt in there just to coat the wood good it helps hold your thread in the wood. If you don't some of your softer woods or like Sapele and some other woods your thread will pull out when you go to thread it on your mandrel. Now, we done drilled a hole in our blank. We done threaded it with a tap. So at this point, we're gonna talk about your Jacob's chuck, your mandrel, and your draw bar. This is a homemade draw bar. I made for like $4. Or you can buy one online or at some store, Walmart, has them online too, but they're not in their stores. Woodcraft, I think, has them in their stores. So basically, you take your Jacob's chuck, slide it in your leg, <coughs> take your draw bar, stick it from the back end, go through the hole that's in your spindle, and then you just tighten it up to your um, Jacob's chuck. So my draw bar is tightened to my Jacob's chuck, and I've already tightened my mandrel into my Jacob's truck. Now, this mandrel that I have doesn't isn't self-cutting. They do have the self-cutting type. I'm not going over that because I haven't had good success with that without tearing out the threads in my blank. Then I'm gonna take my spalted pick in blank and I'm gonna hold hold my spindle so it don't spin and I'm just gonna screw the blank on. Now I'm going to clean my lathe off because I don't want to have extra stuff on my lathe just for safety reasons. I'm going to come up here to my blank. Now if you don't have a draw bar, you can use your tailstock with a center in it that doesn't have, make a big hole in the end of it. just holds up against it just to hold your piece in, but you're still going to have to deal with Jacob's Chuck being able to come out when you take it off to finish it off. So you got to be safe no matter what. I'd rather just make a draw bar and be safe. So we're going to use a roughing gouge. We're going to use a bead tool. We're going to use a spindle gouge. We're going to even use some carbides. So use whatever you got to make this project fun. We're just going to round over to we get the bottom to the size of the mandrel. Okay. On the hip, and we're going to hold our tool on the tool rest, and we're going to get the bevel so we're cutting, and then we're going to rise. Moving them hips. got it rounded out the way I want it. Um, you can make any shape you want. You can just the biggest thing is you don't want your 
bottle stopper to be so tall that you can't put your wine bottle in the refrigerator. So I wouldn't make my bottle stoppers any taller than three inches. And that's on the that's on the tall end. Um, for design and decorating and just so people can do whatever they want um, on this one we're just going to do some beads on it and you can use carbon tools um, this is an easy wood Rikon makes them, Woodpecker makes them uh, you just change out the tip when it gets dull or rotate it until it's all the way around uh, you can either make lines on it, the where you want your stuff to be, your design, your end stopping, your biggest point. You can even take a wire and burn them. But on this one, we're just going to come in here and set this up. So we're at center with our tool. I'm using a bead tool, and this bead tool is from D-Way. Basically, you just put it at center, and you rock it back and forth, and that cleans out the bead, the size of the bead, so the tool won't um, catch. We're just back and forth. We're swaying it back and forth, because the directions are, are, are kind of misworded. So we come into our tool. Like this, and we're going to rock it back and forth. So you're just moving the handle back and forth like a fish tail, right? Yep. And keeping it completely flat against the tool rest. Yes, we are. Now we're just rock, swaying it back and forth. It's back and forth until we get... Until we get the wood all the way into the bottom of the cut on the tool. And I'll show everybody, there's the angle on that tool and uh, now let's show them the uh, and this is the, the finished product cut. very nice bead there beautiful wood too okay. I love spotted wood so now we're going to just keep making a couple beads and then I'm going to come in here with my spindle gouge and and cut that out and okay. then round over the end Back and forth. You can see those little shavings coming out of there. Oh, yeah. And I always pull the tool back so you don't get a catch. And I, I know a lot of us tend to use the uh, the tools that we got, and I think I think in this case, this is one good investment. Oh, yeah. Like, What you can also do is you can make a line where you want your bead and when you rock your machine until the line is gone then your bead's completed so you you cut that groove until it's gone so you keep well you cut the bead until you just see the line start to disappear yep and then you'll know you're the right depth spindle gouge and clean this out and then take the end and round it over and cut it off some because I don't want it that tall but this is demonstration purposes so 
got the tool at the hip. I'm just rolling the bead. So uh, I'm rolling the spindle gals to come up to my bead, clean it out. And this one, I'm just going to turn it sideways and just clean this off so it's shorter. stoppers where they had nothing but beads all the way down it and then even you can take a piece of piano wire or you can buy the wire from some stores and you can burn designs into it Makes a nice dark line, doesn't it? Yeah, they do. And I like doing it with spotted pecan or any type of spotted wood because the the burn lines goes into with the fungus lines or the straight lines. Yeah, it's really pretty. And it just makes it look better. And then you take sandpaper. It isn't like a big bowl. You can do. Um, you don't have to go to 800 on a bottle stop. Go through it and just get any tool marks on it for a minor tear out. Clean it up. be like some of them turners that can do start out with 400 grit sandpaper. I ain't there yet. I had to start out with 150 or 220 nowadays. And some of you might not know, you can always take your sandpaper, turn it upside down, and burnish your piece of wood. See that stuff? I got a little bad spot right here. So hey, it just worked out real quick. Okay. On this one, I'm just going to take some triple E 
and we're going to go over it with some Triple E, and then we're going to go with some Crystal Hut, which is a friction polish. There's several different brands of friction polish you can use. Basically, just rubbing it in there to start with, and a little bit more. And then you're just going to keep rubbing it until it's in there. Because Triple E makes it like 600 on the grit. What you do, go to about 400 on your sandpaper and then let the Triple E be the six? Yeah, most of the time. And if you look, you can see that what the Triple E does to it. And then you have to come in here and when you burn the lines in it, you have to take something and um, scrape the wax out of your burn line so it don't stick out. That's all out. Man, that's pretty. Okay, so that is just a close-up showing just with the Tripoli. Now we're going to put some friction polish on, on my paper towel. It don't, it don't take much. And then we'll turn our machine on and go across our piece until it's worked out and i got the shine that I want. Okay. And what's that product you're using? This is cut coat. It's friction polish. Man, that really made it shine, didn't it? Yeah, I just gotta get my grooves now. And never lean across your lathe when you have a big piece of wood on there. Because this is so little, I was able to slide down to the other end of my lathe and lean across it. Yes, but never lean across the lathe with a, with a bigger piece of wood on here because it catch your clothing wrapped around here and you'll get hurt. Another thing I want to talk to you about that I forgot to earlier. This is a demonstration of what not to do. I watched a guy on YouTube and he put some glue on his mandrel and screwed it into his blank. And he took it off and it worked. Mine, I put too much, I guess, because it won't come off. So always just coat the inside of your hole when you drill it before you thread it. That way it holds it instead of wasting your mandrel. Now this is cooled down now. So I'm going to come over here and unscrew it. And then I'll let Tim get a copy, uh, a look at it for y'all. And I hope you can see why I love spotted pecan. Beautiful. Now these, you know, they unthread so they can take these out and wash the metal pieces in the sink and you don't get your wood in the sink. You can take epoxy or you can put some thick CA in your wood blank and then you just thread it on your bottle stopper. Now you have a complete assembly. Once that's dry, people can unscrew the metal part and wash it, dry it, and put it back on. Very good. Thank you, sir. If you have any questions, you can always give me a call or shoot me an email.